Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be going over the new best jungle route that you should be using in this somewhat new meta that we have. Obviously 215 timers versus 2 means less experience. Obviously that means your second and third rotations have to be set up well. And obviously nerfs to champions are just FK farm without any skill also means it leaves room for those who desire to be more than just a farmer. In this video I will explain why a 4 or 5 camp clear for the majority of junglers is way better than a 6 camp. Obviously if you can do 6 by 315 we'll talk about that. But then in turn how you can translate that to an obscene tempo advantage which is achieved by getting level 6 way before the enemy jungler before 6 minutes even if you don't do a full 6 camp. So as always if you do enjoy this video please consider leaving a like and of course subscribing. The jungle tempo video will be linked in the description below along with my gameplay channel and of course Patreon which has coaching VODs available. And now without hesitation let's begin. So right off the bat, let's look at just how things have been shaping up at the end of Season 10 and start of Season 11. And you are seeing on your screen now an Evelyn vs Diana example as our baseline for this video. They both start at top side, they both go to the bottom side, and if they go the same side, they're basically looking for who has prior. Whoever doesn't, and if they don't win 1v1, they go back to base and gets the other crab. If they're passed opposite to each other, then they simply take the opposite crab, look for a gank, maybe look to counter jungle if something happens, otherwise repeat the process. Uninspired, unskilled, doesn't require you to think whatsoever, however I'm here to tell you that if you do a 4 or 5 camp, you can open up those strategic options to yourself as well as suppress enemy junglers and obliterate their souls. Which should always be step 1, I mean yeah, we want to gank lanes and get objectives, but if we can remove the enemy jungler from the game first, well then, that just makes everything much easier. You see that the Evelyn has lane prior on the bottom side. You're also seeing the Evelyn get very low while stitching together the Wolves, Blue, Gromp. The small change to damage from the jungle monsters plus the regeneration giveth by Lord Grumpulus means you can afford to do this now and still go into the river with a decent level of HP and mana. However, if you're afraid of 1v1 and rotations in high elo, then you're most likely going back to base and then looking to resequence and at least get the top crab first. Diana decides that because she doesn't have prior, she's simply going to rotate to the top side, get that crab before the Evelyn decides to double scuttle. No one wants to be double scuttled. The Evelyn gang's bottom lane eventually gets a kill. She will then be able to push that out as well, leeching some experience. The Diana, on the other hand, had that time for the Grump to respawn. Normally, you could easily resequence at this point. At 4 minutes, 4 or 5, that Grump would respawn again and she can simply rinse on down. The problem is now that there's a 15 second wait time. So you have to decide, do I go back to base before I resequence or do I maybe try and get a gank off on the top side, maybe I want to counter jungle but now I can't because it's too late. All in all, the Diana does another resequence and gets level 6 at the same time as the Evelyn. The problem is the Diana has now not gone back to base. The Evelyn gets 6 on the Wolves, if she didn't push the bottom lane she gets it on the Grump and now she can execute another deadly gank on the bottom side and have huge tempo control for the Dragon and for every course of action in the early game. All of this because she had bottom lane prior for that first crab, forcing the Diana to swap to the other side of the map, and because of the 15 second delay to the spawn timers. So what is this new route that gets you level 6 very fast without having to full clear, and would prevent the Evelyn from having such game control from such a simple thing? I'm glad you asked. Many junglers like Evelyn, like Fiddle, like Rengar, they're getting those 6 camps done by 315. That puts them in position for a crab. Of course, at 3.15 they have to walk to the crabs, so you've got about a 5 second timer there before you reach it. This means whether you're going opposite to them or to the same side as them, you can 4 camp by doing blue side and a red, or you can simply 5 camp by including the raptors, ignore the crugs in this situation. The goal here is to get out onto the map before them. Remember, jungle tempo is the point of having a good first route and a fast first route. Now certain junglers in the meta that specialize at 4 camps, things like Warwick for example, they do the blue side into the red and can't really secure those raptors and crugs, it just isn't worth the time. As I showed in the S plus jungle video, this gives you time though to get ganks off to burn flashes and then fall back down to the crab and because now you've created priority and you probably win 1v1, you can force them out of the river and then easily double scuttle. If mid is pushed in your favor, run across. If it isn't, gank it. Get the double crab and now you can do your tier 2 grump, tier 2 wolves, reset and now you can easily swap to the dragon side, gank bottom lane, take a dragon, counter jungle if the enemy jungler shows top side, it opens up the map to you. Now you might think of a 5 camp in a very very similar way and we'll look at an example of that in a second, but let's use Viego. Viego obviously can 5 camp, he can also 6 camp. The thing about the Evelyn route in the first example is that she's sitting on a blue and grom getting hyper hyper low. You have this a lot now with the 4 clear junglers, so why aren't junglers looking to abuse it? This Viego knew exactly what he wanted to do. He was going to blue side, red, invade and kill. You're getting low, you can't smite both camps which means it's very easy to lose one. And yes, in this case he does have bottom line prior, but in most elos, you're not going to have to be too concerned with it because if you go in with your scanner tracking if they have warded it or not, you have no issue face checking it, killing the jungler, 
taking their stuff and getting out. At the very least, you will be able to burn a flash, take a camp, and fall back to the crab. And then you can assess, do I stand do it, do I leave? That's on your jungle instincts. The Viego actually smites her with the blue and takes it before he shows in front of the Diana. She does a very nice flash outplay and is able to get back into the Grump to secure it, but because she didn't have Bob Prio, she ends up dying. And now you're in the exact same situation as the Warwick video that I mentioned. You can double scuttle, you can gank mid, you can gank top lane, maybe you even want to invade the Diana on the top side again as she goes to a tier 2 Krugs and Raptors. I don't always advise this as you kind of want to reset soon. You can fall back to your tier 2 Grump and Wolves, but if there's a TP and something happens bottom lane, you can react to that as well. And you'll see here the Diana goes investigating to the Viego's blue. She didn't see him before he smited hers, which means she has no idea what his clear was. And because junglers are so damn accustomed to full clearing without any punishment now, they really don't expect this level of aggression and honestly just translates to such a huge advantage. Even though the Diana might farm faster and get more cams, as long as the Viego keeps his pressure, keeps objective control, contests the crab with his lead that he has, and makes sure she isn't able to get going, it's a free win. But also, if you're asking, wait, how the hell do I do that? Well, that's the jungle tempo video. Once again, linking that below. That's why I made that first before this one. Both those situations were first four camps, which means there's a long time between you finishing the fourth camp, getting to the scuttle, and of course, making plays in between that, whether it's a gank or an invade, as we saw in both Warwick and Viego scenario. If you happen to be a first five camp clearer and six camp clearer, it means you don't always have to be forced into that six camp. Path so that you ignore the Krugs, ideally, whether you're starting bottom side or top side, it doesn't really matter. The point is we ignore the Krugs. It takes too long and it hinders the point of this clear, which is ideally to gank mid or to gank bottom lane, depending on which lane is looking more spicy. Or you can, of course, invade just to contest and push away. Just to cut away to the Volibear Vashin example that I showed in the video last week as well, you can see here the idea is fill that time with a gank. If the enemy jungler decides to 5 and 6 camp, they're going to be nowhere near you. If they 4 camp and look to do the crab, as long as you win that gank, you know, top or mid, you're going to have the prior to rotate and help you out. Then as you skip forward, a simple resequence plus a second crab and a gank bottom lane equals Volibra 6, Shin level 4, and that's what we're trying to achieve. And that's what Rango players like to do. So if we come back to the main example, the Volibra's 5 camp here is trying to stifle the same exact goal just by cutting him off mid-process. And if the full clear is to use your prior to actually get a crab and make a play, if you do that 5 camp or 4 camp, you can just simply cut that off simply by being somewhere before them and sneaking away a crab, just like in the Volibear vs. Jin example. But in this game, you're watching a very long, drawn-out level 3 fight. If you have prior, use prior. If you don't have prior, simply use it to position yourself to sneak something and get out. You have to make that call, obviously, but most of what we've covered is simply the first facet of this clear. Remember, the point was to get level 6 quickly before the enemy jungler. It's very different when other fights break out and you're not able to double scuttle. If you are able to double scuttle, you can simply reloop before going back to base, and that's where you get that very fast level 6. As you see on the Rengar's case, it's different for him. Because the fight was so long, he decides that Rengar has respawned and gone straight to the top crab, which means it's not worth even going there. He's going to take his Krugs, reset, Go back to the top side, and now you can set yourself up with a Grump, Wolves, Raptors, look mid lane, look bottom lane. The thing is, that isn't always the best play. Yes, it is if you want the dragon, and if that's your win condition, and if you have a bottom lane that's gankable, and so on. But sometimes you need to reverse the map and go gank top lane, which he does. The cost for this is, of course, a dragon. But now your top laner gets a bit more fed, you have a Shen, you can still look to go make plays. Your experience lead and tempo advantage is still yours. I would say that first Evelyn example for a ganking lane where you only get one crab, that was pretty fast. If you do get a double scuttle and a gank, you can get it by 541. You start off, you know you're against the Hecarim, you're the Diana, you start on the bottom side. You simply decide to 5 camp into crab. Why? Simply because you know he's going to 6 camp and instead of invading him, we use that crab to get the bottom crab, use that bottom crab to gank bottom lane, you shove the wave, the enemy laners show up. Now against bad junglers, you're not losing anything here, but because the Hecarim was probably raised by season 11 beginnings, he's just gonna six camp into a counter jungling of Krugs. If this was a Diana who started top side and went bottom, normally that would have been a second tier Krug spawn. But because of the change in the meta and the change of the Diana's clearing patterns, it's simply a level one Krug camp. Diana doesn't care. She stays out after her gang bottle blade, much like the Volibear for Shin example. Grom, Wolves, Raptors, Level 6. She confirms the Krugs are gone, goes back to base, and now you have the whole world available to you. You can simply go down to your Grump Wolves Raptors when they respawn. Unfortunately, that's a 2 minute 15 spawn timer, so we'll just gank bottom lane. If we don't need to, we can gank mid lane. If we don't need to, 
we do the dragon. Obviously for the four camp clearers, you're not gonna get six this fast. It's really for the five campers who can do this, Purely because the four campers won't have done the Raptors and Crux to set up a second tier. The five campers do have to have a lane leech, double crab, and a gank in order to get that six quickly. And really, these four and five camp variants are just countering the six camp version of this. The Rengars, the Fiddles, the Evelyns, they're doing a full clear. They're getting level four. They're getting a crab. They're trying to get a second crab as well. You can either gank or reset, that's your choice. You do another sequence and now you're level six. You want that tempo advantage on laners way before they're ready for it. You want that tempo advantage on the enemy jungler as well. And honestly, I hope you can see from these variety of examples why a four and five camp just to get on the map 15 seconds sooner can allow you the fights that you want, can allow you to invade and kill people greeting for a six camp very quickly, can allow you to get the crabs you don't even deserve because you don't have prior, but you can eat them get out and swap sides. Using this kind of fast level 6 jungle route, whether it's a 5 or 4 camp, maybe even that 6 camp if you can get away with it, I definitely think a 5 camp and a 4 camp are very, very good for those junglers that can gank early, fight early, and you really want those double crabs, purely because it sets you up for objective secures, tempo advantage, and the enemy jungler is just going to be farming, his laners are going to be upset, and in low elo games, mid elo games, diamond games, this is going to be so huge. In higher elo, you can get away with the 6 camps, of course. But the Volleybear Rengar was Challenger, the Viego was Challenger, the Dino was Master. This is also working just to accelerate the game against junglers who have become passive and honestly just a bit boring. Finally, you're asking what happens if I simply full clear and do none of this? I don't want to invade, I don't want to gank, I just want to scale. Let's observe a closing example of complete sadness. And Evelyn decides to do a full clear jungle route. This means she won't be on the crab until it's been up for about 10-15 seconds. If the enemy jungler does a 4 and 5 camp, he's gonna get that crab and get out. The thing is, this Lee Sin was bad at clearing and he could have done a 6 camp, but he did a 5 camp, and now he is late to the crab as well. The problem is, the Evelyn used both smites, he didn't, he takes the crab. Now if you're in the Evelyn's case, it doesn't matter that she lost it to a smite, you know, if the Lee Sin had come out of the jungle soon and taken it, she'd be in the exact same situation. But what she's able to do is cross the rivers of death and get to the other side and secure that scuttle. Back to base, thumbs up, right? Not quite so fast. Just before six minutes, she is once again on her second sequence. She's walking through that tribush and bottom lane. She hasn't had a gank yet. She hasn't had a kill yet. And if you don't have that necessary action, if you don't get double crabs and do something in a lane, you will not be level six before six minutes. The thing is, with that second Grump being killed at 458, the third Grump is only going to spawn at 7 minutes 13. That's a 30 second delay over what it would have been in the same scenario in the previous editions of the meta, which is why I love that change. She didn't have any sort of laner interaction, she only focused on her farming and clearing with crabs. Lisa knew she was gonna do that and decided to take away a dragon in the meantime, so if you 4 or 5 camp, this is the kind of tempo you can have over a farmer. It seems the red team also had a ward in the tribe bush, which means there's a TP committed, there's a fight that erupts, Leeson's in the area, and now look at her, her support is dead, she's just waiting around, she has nothing else to do, she has to hover, she's level 5, she doesn't have level 6, the only reason it changes course is because Lord Singe TPs down with a gas cloud, decides to help give an assist on the Leeson, she gets a few ward kills, and finally she hits level 6. But what if this didn't happen? What if Leeson just killed the Janna, nothing else happened and she had to go back to base? a hugely delayed level 6, which is horrible for an Evelyn, it's horrible for a Fiddle, and it's horrible for a Rengar. Now obviously these champions need to full clear, especially a Fiddlesticks. However, don't let that distract you from the fact that you need to gank or have some kind of action early. And if you're a Rengar specifically, you can very easily do a 5 camp into some sort of invade or scuttle action just to suppress them and get a lead, which is of course the whole point of your champion. As you can see, the first, second, and third rotations of your camps are no longer freebies to scale, you have to have some kind of activity Consider thinking deeply about that full clear double scuttle second rotation for level 6, but honestly if your champion cannot do that, the 4 and 5 camps will let you obliterate enemies who try and full clear. Tempo advantage, dragon control, herald control, early level 6, it's all yours if you play it right and make the right decisions. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something, definitely a little bit ranty on the roots because I love jungle action when you have to think and not AFK rinse clear, I do think it is a good change and you can see why in this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share if you did enjoy it. Don't forget to head to the gameplay channel for your variety of champion gameplays. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.